The Sodor Relocation Project Episode 1 The Downfall The night before it all happened, the engines felt uneasy. Gordon had gone to the mainland with a special train, and that night an orange shoe hung in the sky. It was to be a warning, but no one would understand that until the next morning came. Despite their fears, some of the engines drifted off to sleep before their fires had even been put out. Percy, however, was too nervous. A storm had started and he could hear the thunder crashing down. There was a loud crack of lightning and Percy screamed. It was a good thing he did as he woke the other engines just in time. It took all day to clear up the mess. Tidmouth sheds had been hit by lightning and caught fire in the middle of the night. The engines were lucky they had not had their fires dropped yet, and that Percy had screamed to wake them all up, or they could have all been lost in the blaze. It took Harold dropping water on it from above to finally put the fire out. Sir Topham Hatt was on the phone with the Tidmouth Insurance Company as he watched the smouldering sheds from his office. His heart sunk as he was told insurance on railway-related buildings in and around Tidmouth had run out the week before. He had no money to repair the shed. Due to the fire, the main seven were split up for the first time in 20 years of living at Tidmouth. Thomas and Percy were lucky and got to go back to the Farquhar sheds with Toby. He was glad they were okay, but was worried for them. The others were not so lucky and had to find random good sheds around the main line to sleep in. Gordon was shocked the next day when he arrived at lunchtime with the express from the mainland. His shock was not helped when a diesel, which had come from the mainland to help clear away the bubble, put a long train of bricks right past him. Percy wasn't a fan of the mainland diesel at all. Him, the diesel and Duck had been told to clear away the rubble from the sheds, but the diesel was lazy and often fell asleep while moving. Duck and Percy felt like they'd been through this before. The second day after the fire is when it really hit home. Didmouth wasn't the capital of Soda, but it was a huge town with lots of industry. With it no longer holding most of the engines, some of the goods, which used to be taken on early trains, were given to the roads 